Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sayar from Dentabas, your best online mentor for the preparation of INBD ADAT and AFK exam. Please don't wait and subscribe to my channel on YouTube and visit my website at Dentabest. We are offering different personalized and self-study smart learning program for my dear hardworking students at a very affordable cost. Today, I have taken a topic of orthodontics that is postnatal growth of facial skeleton. Let us dig in deeper and see what all important concepts we have to remember here. First of all, students, let's see what all topics we are going to cover here. Of course, the postnatal growth of the craniofacial skeleton. Then we have uh, topics uh, of cranial base that we are going to cover here. How the growth happens here, calvaria, then your nasal maxillary complex, mandible, developmental anomalies, the conclusion. First of all, we start with different growth phases that we have in the postnatal growth. Infancy, first years of life, then childhood, 1 to 14 years. Early childhood is divided into 1 to 6, middle childhood is 6 to 10, and late childhood is 10 to 14. And adolescent is considered from 14 to 20 years of age, or you can even say 13 to 20 years of age. The human facial skeleton students, it's unique, and the craniofacial structure is formed from 22 bones. 8 bones are cranial and 14 facial bones, inclusive of mandible, that is a movable bone of your face. So bones of the cranial vault uh, students or calvaria, they are intramembranous in nature. And at birth, cranium is 63% of the adult size and sutures are wide open, cortex is thin and area of contact of bone has only thin layer of fibrous covering. And the thin layers makes fontanelles. So you have the anterior fontanelle and posterior fontanelle. Anterior fontanelle is at the junction of frontal and parietal bone, while posterior fontanelle is at the junction of occipital and parietal bone. Let us see students, uh, the normal skull of the newborn. You can see this is the frontal bones here. You see from the top. This is the anterior fontanelle. Now, this is the coronal suture that is between the frontal bone and the serital bone. This is also called as the serital suture in between two parietal bone. Then this is the metopic suture that is between two frontal bone. Now, if you look at this, this is the posterior fontanelle, the fibrous covering here. This is the lambdoid suture that is between the occipital bone and the two parietal bone. Not only anterior and posterior fontanelle, you also have anterolateral fontanelle that is at the junction of frontal, parietal, temporal, and greater vingosphenoid. You also have posterolateral uh, fontanelle that is at the junction of temporal, occipital, and the parietal bone. If you look at the picture here, here we can see this is the posterolateral fontanelle here, and this is the anterolateral fontanelle. So, closure of fontanelle, the posterior fontanelle student, it is fusing at birth itself, while anterior closes about posterior, anterolateral around 15 months. And posterolateral fontanelle are closing at one and a half years. As the brain is growing, the bones of cranial vault are also growing along with it. They are passively translated in the space. To maintain contact with the adjacent bone, osteogenic tissue fills it at the sutural end. And the remodeling will happen with the deposition and resorption of the bone. Now look at the cranial base. Cranial base student is one of the most stable structure among the facial structures we have. And the bones of the cranial base, they grow endochondral. It occurs by the synchondrosis. So growth of the cranial base occurs by the synchondrosis and the surface remodeling. In the cranial base, you have four types of synchondrosis which are being seen. The so synchondrosis students is actually the remnant of the cartilage from the prenatal life. The so types is interethmoidal synchondrosis, intersphenoid, sphenooccipital, and sphenoethmoidal. These are the four synchondrosis that we have. So, sphenooccipital synchondrosis it fuse, start fusing by 13 to 15 years of age, but by age 20, it is completely fused. Interoccipital, it closes at fifth year, and intersphenoid, it closes at birth, and sphenoethmoidal from 5 to 20. So actually, the last synchondrosis to fuse, it is actually sphenooccipital. How there is an increase in size of the cranial base is due to primary displacement of the bone due to growth of functional matrix that is lobes of brain and linear displacement caused by the growth as synchondrosis, mainly sphenox. And the displacement are associated with the tension related apposition or deposition of the bone at the sutures. If you look at the picture here, the growth is synchondrosis with the tissue separating forces that are being created. Now let us talk about the nasomaxillary complex. The dimension of the phase that complete the growth early is the width, then the depth, and adult height is achieved at the last. So at birth, the height difference between the cranium and the face is 1 is to 8. When the child grows, the ratio drastically changes because of increasing depth and height. Then the face is going to grow more than the cranium. 
Nasal axillary growth is studied regionally. What are the bones that we study? Maxilla, palate, zygomatic bone, nasal cavity and the orbit. These are the bones that comes under nasomaxillary complex. Two maxilla articulate with each other in the midline at the intermaxillary suture and is connected to the bones by falling. You have zygomaticofrontal suture, zygomaticotemporal suture, zygomaticomaxillary suture, frontomaxillary suture, frontonasal suture and the nasomaxillary suture. Let's see what are different parts of maxilla students we have. So, we have the body, large and pyramidal in shape. Then we have four processes. If you can see, this is the frontal process of maxilla. Then we have the zygomatic process. We have the alveolar process in which the teeth socket are there. Then we have the palatine process of maxilla. And right here you can see is your maxillary sinus. Maxilla houses the largest sinus of the face that is maxillary sinus. And maxilla will grow downward and forward in response to various forces. Different mechanisms are involved in this growth. Displacement mechanism, growth at sutures and also surface remodeling. So maxilla is attached to the cranial base by means of number of sutures. So the growth of cranial base has a direct bearing on the nasomaxillary growth. So displacement of the nasomaxillary complex is divided into the primary displacement and the secondary displacement. So, let us see what is primary and secondary displacement. So, primary displacement is seen when maxilla grows on its own. It will be in the forward direction. While secondary displacement or passive displacement of maxilla occur due to the growth in the middle cranial fossa. So, for growth of maxilla, the apposition or deposition will happen in the maxillary to porosity region occurs to lengthen the maxilla. Thus, there is a backward growth of maxilla originally at the tuberosity region and this backward thrust will result in forward displacement of the maxilla. While secondary displacement, the growth of adjacent suture will influence the maxillary growth. Middle cranial fossa is going to grow upward and forward and passive displacement of nasomaxillary complex will occur in downward and forward direction. In the primary displacement, enlargement of bone due to sinus formation within the bone also displaces the maxilla forward direction, while the nasomaxillary complex simply translate anteriorly or forward as the middle cranial fossa grows in that direction. Now, let us see the growth of maxilla with the growth at suture. Maxilla, as we know, is connected to cranium and the cranial base by number of suture. And these sutures are oblique or more or less parallel to each other. So, growth at these sutures like the frontozygomatic, frontomaxillary, frontonasal, nasomaxillary, it will allow the downward and forward repositioning of the maxilla, the growth at these sutures. And another important phenomena is that growth of the surrounding soft tissue capsule will carry the maxilla in the downward and forward direction. So, this will lead to opening up the space as suture attachment and the tension related bone formation occur at the suture. So, new bone is formed on either side of the suture that we have and this will lead to overall increase of the bone on either side. Now, look at the surface remodeling. So, in addition to the growth occurring at the suture, massive remodeling by the bone deposition and resorption occur. That will bring increase in size, change in the shape of the bone and also the change in the functional relationship. So, if you look at the picture, the sign of plus plus is where the bone is deposited and the minus minus is where the bone is being resorbed. Selective resorption and deposition takes place in the complex manner in maxilla to attain its typical shape to form the orbit, palatal surface, the alveolar surface, the maxillary tuberosity, the sinus and the lateral wall of the nose. Now, when we talk about the palatal growth, we know newborn palate is shallow and horseshoe shaped dental arch has equal length and width. But as the palatal is growing with the age advancement, it can be explained with the help of expanding V deposition. This is a V, this is a V, so it is expanding. Deposition on the inner aspect of the V, that is the palatal roof and the resorption you can see is on the outer aspect of the V, nasal floor. It will expand V in direction of open end. So, you can see the V here. So, V is expanding. So, downward growth and expansion of palate in the form of V is due to the deposition at the palatal roof. Now, the eruption of the teeth increases the vertical height of alveolar bone and depth of palate. An increase in width also receives contribution by apposition or deposition at the intermaxillary suture. Now, let us talk about the zygomatic bone. Again, you can see the negative sign is where the resorption is happening. The positive sign is where the deposition of bone is happening. As the maxilla is displaced anteriorly, its anterior surface is resorptive. The zygomatic bone, it shifts posteriorly. Now, the anterior surface of the zygomatic or the front surface of zygomatic and the medial surface are resorptive, just like you have in the maxilla. And the posterior and lateral surfaces are depository, where the bone is deposited. This is going to expand your zygomatic bone bilaterally. 
and by zygomatic width is going to increase with the age. So, bone as a whole will relocate posteriorly. Now, when we talk about the nasal cavity, the floor and lateral walls of the nasal cavity are resorptive with deposition in the medial wall of the sinus. This will expand the nasal cavity and the portion of the roof near the olfactory fossa students is depository. Why? Because the endocardial surface is resorptive. The cone case are remodeled by deposition in the lateral and inferior side and deposition on the superior and the middle side. Now, let us see growth of the orbit. Lacrimal bone and the sutural system surrounding it, according to the scientist Enlo, they are the key for mid facial growth and development. On the endocranial side, you are going to have resorption, and on the orbital side, you are going to have the deposition. By this growth mechanism, the orbit is relocated anteriorly. For the lacrimal bone growth student, the lateral wall, you have the deposition, the medial wall, you have the resorption, and the lining on the roof and floor, it is depository. Now, when we talk about the shape of the face, the bony part in the center of face like nasal bridge, the medial rim of the orbit, they are getting deposition and they are growing forward anteriorly with the growth. But those in the lateral aspect of the face, the lateral orbital rim are not only remodeled laterally by resorption but also posteriorly. Thus, the face student which was flat at the birth has developed a configuration wherein the central aspect of the face is more anterior. To the lateral aspect and there is gradual slope from medial to lateral. The mandible as we know student is a unique bone both by its structure and function. It is a horseshoe bone with vertical ramus at the end of the horseshoe. Of all the facial bone the mandible grows undergoes late largest amount of growth postnatally that is after birth and also exhibit largest variability in the morphology. Although the mandible look like a single bone in the development in the adult but developmentally and functionally it started from several skeletal subunits. So, if you look at the body of the mandible here, this is the mental foramen at the apex of mandibular second premolar. This is a mandibular foramen here. This is a condite process. This is a condyle we have. Then we have the glenoid fossa. This is called as a sigmoid notch between the condyle and the condite. This is the ramus, the vertical process, this is the angle of the mandible. Now, here we can see uh, the inferior canal, who is the inferior nerve, vein, and artery will pass through. These are the parts of the mandible, angle, corpus or body, ramus, condyla process, cornite process, alveolar process, chin, lingual tuberosity. Let's see student firstly the growth of ramus. Ramus move progressively posterior by combination of both deposition and resorption. So, resorption occur on the anterior part of the ramus while both deposition occur on the posterior part of the ramus. And this result in drift of the ramus in the posterior direction. You can see the picture negative negative sign. This is the resorption and positive positive on the posterior part of the ramus. You can see where the deposition of the bone is happening. Now, let us talk about the mandibular foramen. So, mandibular foramen maintains position by deposition in the anterior rim and resorption in the posterior rim and also it will shift posteriorly and thus always centered in the medial surface of ramus. This mandibular foramen we know will lead to mandibular canal also called as the inferior alveolar canal. The corpus of the body or the mandible increase in length of the mandibular body or corpus is by resorption on the anterior border of ramus, thus converting the former ravel bone into posterior part of the body of mandible. And later it was found that mandible actually undergoes a rotational pattern of the growth. So you have the closing rotation, opening rotation, average closing rotation. Let us see the growth of angle now. So on the lingual side of angle of mandible, that is where the resorption is occurring on the posterior inferior aspect while deposition is occurring at the anterosuperior aspect. For the buccal side just reverse of it happens. This type of growth pattern will result in flaring of the angle of mandible as the age is advancing. Now at the lingual tuberosity, it is very important anatomic site at the junction of ramus and the body of the medial aspect of the ramus. Lingual tuberosity is actually the counterpart of your maxi tuberosity. So lingual tuberosity is going to move posteriorly. So, lingual tuberosity is going to move posteriorly by deposition the posterior facing. You can see the picture here. This is the lingula, a tongue shaped projection that covers the opening of mandibular foramen. You can see this is the myeloid line. The myeloid muscle is going to get attached here. This right here is the lingual tuberosity we have. The region below the lingual tuberosity is the lingual fossa, which is a resorptive area, thereby accentuating the lingual tuberosity. And when viewed from the lateral aspect, the lingual tuberosity are placed at the same vertical line that is called as posterior maxillary plane. The alveolar process will develop in response to presence of tooth buds. When the tooth is there, the alveolar process is going to develop. So as the tooth erupts, 
the alveolar process increases in height by the bone deposition at the margin. It fails to develop if teeth are absent and resolve in response to tooth extraction. Now for the chin, in infancy, chin is usually underdeveloped. So as the age is advancing, the growth of chin becomes more significant. So the mental protuberance that we say, it is formed by osseous deposition in the childhood and the prominence is accentuated by the bone resorption in the alveolar region above it that will create a supramental concavity that is known as point B on your cephalometrics. Now the condyla process of condyle is of special interest because it is a major site of growth we have. So condyla cartilage is a secondary cartilage which makes an important contribution to overall length of the mandible. So when we talk about different ossification of bones, we know the mandible is intramembranous except mandibular condyle which is going to grow endochondral. So the growth of the soft tissue students, it will carry the mandible forward and downward while condyla growth fills in the resultant space to maintain the contact with the cranial base. Condyla growth rate, we know it increases at puberty, reaching a peak between 12 to 14 years. The growth ceases at about 20 years of age. This is the V principle of growth. Condyle is growing like an expanding V. The neck of the condyle is absorptive on the buccal and the lingual surface. And this is coupled with deposition on the condyla head region. So that the condyle will relocate to more posterior and superior position. If you can look at this, this is the V principle of growth. When it is growing, it, this V is slowly expanding. Now, growth of coronary process, it follows the enlarging V principle as well. It has a twisted form and the medial surface of the process faces posteriorly, superiorly and lingually at all time. So, deposition happens on the medial surface of the coronary that not only leads to posterior lengthening of bandible but also increases the height. 